Benakam, Ni Hao, Assalamualaikum, and hello everyone. Hope you guys have an amazing day today. Again with me, Putri Farah. Today I'll be talking about the biggest inequality that happened in Malaysia. What more can be if not race, racial racism, the unequal distribution of resources, opportunities, and power based on race or ethnicity is referred to as racial inequality. This form of inequality is frequently firmly rooted in social, economic, and political institutions and can have far-reaching consequences for people, communities, and society as a whole. This beautiful multiracial, multi-ethnic, one Malaysia country where we're cool of celebrating each other's festivities but still have problem with racial inequality. Have you ever heard the oldies in gathering will tell you Eh, 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 don't hear that Indian people, they might beat you up if you make a mistake. Eh, 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 don't friend with the Malay guy or girl, later you'll be influenced by your laziness. Eh, 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 see the Chinese people over there must be wanting to brag about their richness. Multiracial, multi-ethnic, multi-racist. And if we do call out racism, we are often to us sit back down. They will be like, Hey, kids nowadays very sensitive lah. Comment a little bit only. That's the fact word. Hey, we're not as bad as other countries, okay? Not that racist also. I still friend with other races cause attend their open houses on each festivities. Okay, why? Why so sensitive? When actually, that's a stereotype that they always practice. They say that they're not racist, but then there's we prefer Chinese tenants and employees. Malays are so lazy. Indians are gangsters. Am I right? And man, we love disguising our racism as a joke. One that no one laughing except other races. Or sometimes, sometimes la. We will call it as preferences. Which is ironic because your pre- preferences cannot be racist, can they? Have you ever wondered when all this prejudice will end? Is a Malaysian sick of this type of behavior? Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could get just just get rid of racism? Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen, stop date for ringing. The racism has grown big and strong, even fertilized by hate. Wow, not enough with big and strong, then fertilize with hit some more. It must have a lot of branches like tree at this moment. But let's let's take a look with this very first branches that I will mention, which is a branches where people refer to when they say, The system is set up against us. None other than that, it, if it's not institutional racism. Racial quotas in housing, education, businesses, girl, just name it. We got it. Everything and anything is radicalized to benefit one race over another and minority races are constantly reminded that they should be grateful for their existence. That was bad. System Systemic racism has resulted in major gaps in many nations, including the United States, in sectors like as education, employment, housing, healthcare, and criminal justice. These gaps frequently disproportionately affect marginalized population, notably black, indigenous, indigenous, and people of color who have endured prejudice and persecution in the past. So, while we're already talking about the first branches, why not we go into the second branches, which is stereotype. Mm, Malay is lazy and corrupt. All the Chinese are stingy but rich. But wow, their, their brains for math very good. Alahai, if it's Indian, of course, like gangster, dirty also, but when it comes to speaking, ooh, very good. Even what appears as positive stereotypes can have negative consequences on people like assuming all Chinese kids are good in maths, Indians are so good in English, which will pressure them more than you guys could think, and all Malays are so privileged like assuming that no one from their community 
needs any help. These assumptions might prevent people from getting the help that they need when every person on earth are deserved to be helped no matter what race or color you are. There is a reason why we're not supposed to act on our stereotypes, ladies and gentlemen. They can be used to categorize people into strict and frequently unfavorable groups based on perceived physical, cultural, and or social qualities. Racism, hatred, and injustice may all be worsened by racial stereotypes. They can reinforce the, na- the notion that people of certain race or ethnicities are inherently inferior or superior to others, leading to negative attitudes and behaviors towards them. Furthermore, racial stereotypes can contribute to a self-fulfilling prophecy in which individuals internalize negative stereotypes about their own racial or ethnic group, resulting in lower self-esteem, hopelessness, and even a lack of motivation to succeed. So that was second branch, which is stereotypes. Let's go to the next branch, which is colorism. This colorism, well, this one, I think people from all races can relate to this kind of racism. It's quite universal, but unfortunately, it's always must be fair skin. Um, 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 sorry, your skin color not the right fit for us. It's honestly just being treated poorly or getting the worst assumption towards you just because you're dark skin. People would be like, yo, dark skin must be so stupid. Dirty, no job, bad image. Dark so cannot represent the brand correctly. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. What makes you so confident that your your fair skin can represent the brand correctly? That you're brilliant, very clean person, definitely got job one, huh? What's so confident, huh? One more thing about this colorism, right? In media, right? Also, we've been brainwashed that dark skinness is stereotyped as a negative thing, like a similar narrative has been used in un unnum- in num- innumerable sorry innumerable ads as well as in films and television programs in order to convey that they are and un- the unpleasant before a character may frequently wear face paint that is far darker than their natural skin tone with the aid of a magical product that they will subsequently change into a light skin attractive and confident person Having white skin is supposed to be a generally sought aim and anyone who doesn't fit that n- that norm is seen to be undeserving of love, attention, kindness, friendship and even professional chances we've been told for decades, either openly or implicitly. But why have we been subjected to this message for such a long time? I've got no idea too guys. Okay, so let's get to the last branch, which is, which is racial slurs. Unfortunately, racial slurs and prejudice do exist in Malaysia, which a country with a varied population. Racial slurs are used in Malaysia to degrade persons or organizations based on their race or ethnicity. These insults can be heard in a variety of areas, including public places, schools, workplaces, and even the media. They might be aimed towards individuals from various ethnic backgrounds or at the entire ethnic groupings. They will be like judging and mocking them with China Babi, Kaling, Sakai, Jakun. Guys, why would you why would you call people like that? If people eat if people eating pork doesn't mean that you can call them pig, guys. About Sakai and Jakun are names of some of the oldest ethnic groups in this country. Please don't defile history. The use of racial slurs can foster an environment of animosity, mistrust, and intolerance, making it more difficult for people of diverse ethnic backgrounds to work together to achieve common goals. It is critical to recognize the harm that these insults may do and to strive towards creating a more inclusive society that values diversity and supports equality. 
But thank God, Malaysia has this anti-hate speech and discrimination legislation in effect, notably the Sedition Act and the Panel Code, which may inciting racial of religious hatred unlawful. However, much work remains to be done to eliminate racial religious, uh, sorry, racial discrimination and promote unity and understanding among Malaysia's diverse communities. So let's let's move to the next segment, which I will share some Malaysian experience on racism. Okay, so now let me share some Malaysian experience on racism. This was from Kuraisha Adamsha. I was dug due to I was dug due to joining a lot of school sport activity when I was in Sekolah Kebangsaan. Plus, somewhere I'm Indian. Other kids always bully me by naming me Kling or smells like curry, which made my self esteem down until I don't want to go to school anymore, or far more worse, feel alone in a crowd. But now, when I'm a little fair, the society treat me differently and not as bad as when I was kid. Some don't even believe me or ask me why am I fair for an Indian and you're right for an Indian and you're right the treatment are different based on racial. Next from Warren Wee, as a Chinese my experience with racism was during COVID when it was in the early stages. People especially girls will see me and whisper among themselves, Corona, Corona. Because COVID supposedly came from China. My good friend who was a Chinese Muslim also went through this. Let's hear from the ethnic group, Alara Fei. I am the one that from ethnic group. It seems like, it seems that we are facing racism after racism. I am not too fair, which is 10, plus I am Daya. When studying in Malacca, some people from all races will say, Hey, um, did Sarawakian dark? Are they still live in the on the tree? Like, did you guys get drunk when you guys drink something? It seems like I am facing racism two times more than any three main races feel. Next, let's hear Malay's experience. People tend to not believe in me when doing things from them. They will request for Chinese stuff when actually I've been serving them for as long as they are at the store. I'm so lost in confidence when actually I'm so expert in doing that job. <sighs> Still think that people aren't affected, broken, crushed by racism in Malaysia? That said, while we can't possibly compare different experiences of racism because it's all bad and should happen. For ages, race inequality has been a prevalent issue that has harmed individuals, groups, and civilization all over the world. Systemic racism, discrimination, and oppression have resulted in major gaps in a variety of domains including education, work, healthcare, housing, and criminal justice. The struggle against racial injustice necessitates a concentrated and ongoing effort to demolish the institutions and structures that perpetuate racial inequities. It entails admitting the presence of racism and prejudice, educating ourselves and others, and working to achieve an inclusive, egalitarian, and fair society for everyone. To achieve a more fair and equitable society, people, organization, and governments must work together. We can encourage understanding, celebrate diversity, and create a future in which everyone has equal access to opportunities, resources, and a higher quality of life by working together. So that's all for me. See you guys with the next episode. Keep smiling, stay positive, and don't forget, hit up kind of chill. Bye guys!